Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native father of the effortless English system that trains you, that teaches you to speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly. When you commit to my VIP program, commit, don't quit. Go today. Commit to my VIP program at effortlessenglishclub.com. Effortlessenglishclub.com. Calm. Brave New World Chapter 3 today. This is a heavy chapter. It's a big chapter, and we really get the full... Oh, it's, it's a depressing chapter, I'll be honest. I was a little depressed after reading it. Um, <laughs> uh, we really get the big picture here in Chapter 3 of what is Brave New World exactly. What is it? We're getting the full picture. I am uh, live on YouTube now. The comments are still having problems on Facebook. I contacted the company, the software company. They found the problem. They're going to fix it. So we'll be back on Facebook soon. A few announcements. Um, let me think. Ah, Business English Conversations. My Business English Conversations course is coming very soon. We're almost done with it. It's almost ready again. So if you are, if you are interested in business English, you want to improve your job, your career, make more money, all of these things, enjoy your work more, business English conversations. It's a great course. A lot of people love, love, love that course. So it's back, coming back soon. I'll talk more about it soon. All right. Let's jump in. So today we're doing Brave New World. So just a, a note to the YouTube audience, since you guys are not used to this so much. Try to stay focused on the topic in your comments. I will ignore your comments. Hey, Lisa, good to see you. Um, I'll ignore your comments while I'm discussing the book. And then after that, after I discuss the main ideas, and this is a hard chapter to teach, okay? I had to really think about this one. This is a big chapter. There's a lot in this chapter. Um, so anyway, then I'll come back and we'll discuss the book. So I probably will not answer questions about general English learning today. It's too distracting, right? We have a very heavy, uh, deep book with a lot of stuff, especially today, this chapter. So let's focus on the book. All right, now just a quick note before I start chapter three. Um, what we're seeing with Brave New World is that we're getting a big, a very big, powerful introduction to the world, right? There are really almost no characters, right? In the first two chapters, there's almost no characters. There's this director guy, right? The director giving a tour to students. So he's giving the students the tour of where the children are being born and raised. So this is just kind of showing us what kind of world is this. We don't know anything about the director. So right now, there's really no story yet, right? And there are really no characters. There's one director guy. But in chapter three, we will be introduced to the, uh, a couple of the main characters. Probably really, um, probably the most important characters. We finally get to meet them in chapter three. We also get a big view of this world now. The really all how horrible and terrible it really is. We get a much bigger view because in this chapter three, we see how do they raise the children? the older children, like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, what are they doing to them? And it's horrible. We also get a history lesson from, we get to see one of the big world controllers in this chapter. So we learn, in this chapter, we learn there are 10 world controllers that rule the whole world. There are 10 of them, and we meet one of them in this chapter, the one that rules, that one that controls Europe. And he gives a history lesson. He tells, how did it happen? How did they create Brave New World? How did everyone become slaves? How did this happen? And we'll learn about that too. 
All right, so let's just go because it's a big, hard chapter, and uh, we might as well not waste time. Chapter three. Now it's the the tour continues with the students. Um, and the, the students and the director they go and they see next. They go to where the children are. Six or seven hundred little boys running around playing. So that seems okay, right? But here's where we get something really horrible. They're all naked. All the children are naked. And first we learn they're playing this game with a ball. But it's not just with the ball. It's with the machine. Like they, the, the ball drops into some machine and it does lots of different things. And then the, ball, the machine will throw the ball and the kids try to catch it. And uh, basically they say, why? Why the machine? And the director explains that in Brave New World, they do not allow no simple games. He says in the past, right, like our world, in the past that kids, children played only just with the ball, nothing else, no machines. But that's not good because then they don't buy anything. A ball is too cheap. So they need to make games that have a lot of equipment. They need games that have a lot of machines because then they have to spend a lot of money to play the game. Interesting, right? So consumption, right? This is about being consumers. Brave New World, they use consuming. They constantly want everyone buying, 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 focused on constantly buying, consuming. So they don't like simple things. They don't like cheap, simple books. They don't like games that are cheap or free. They don't like nature because it's free, right? Everything has to be expensive and you have to buy it and spending, spending, consuming, consuming, consuming. Now, next, we get something very disturbing because it's happening right now in our world. They, they, so this is not an accident. It's happening now. It's planned. The, our world controllers are doing this. The children are playing sexual games. So the adults encourage and teach the children to play, to have sex, to play sexual games, even at a young, young age, even at like age four or five years old. They want them to be playing around, the boys and the girls playing and kind of doing sexual things together. They want them to become uh, addicted to sex. They want the children to be sexualized at a very, very, very young age. It's disturbing, honestly, right? This is disturbing. And it's especially disturbing if you know what's happening in our world now where children are being sexualized at a younger and younger and younger age. We're seeing this. You see this with the transgender thing. The media is pushing this all the time, the TV. Right, where now they're taking little boys like six, seven years old and telling them that they want to be girls and give, giving them hormones and putting them in dresses. And this is a kind of sexualizing them. It's child abuse of the worst kind. It's horrible. But not only that, you'll see in a lot of advertising now, you see in a lot of advertising now where you'll see children in the ads, like a, like a seven-year-old child, uh, and they dress them very sexy. Or you'll see it in some movies and TV shows where they try to make the boys and especially the girls look really sexy at younger and younger and younger ages. You see it with pop stars like Taylor Swift and uh, others where they um, I mean, look what they did to Miley Cyrus. She was this had this image of kind of just sweet, innocent girl, and they turned them into these sexual objects right? At younger and younger ages. So sexualizing children, getting children involved in sex at super young ages. This is their plan and they are doing it. And so in Brave New World, of course, it's already done. Then there's a, uh, something happens. There's a boy, a little boy doesn't want to do the sexual stuff. And he's crying. He doesn't want to do it. But they, they punish him and they take him to a psychologist because they say that's not normal, right? A little boy should want to play around and ha do sexual stuff at a very young age. See, this also, the thing we see now, 
we call them pedophiles, adults who try to harm children with sex. Uh, they love this. They want the children to be more and more sexual because then they can abuse the children more easily. And this is very, it's happening more and more and more now, and it's being pushed by our media worldwide. This is depressing. <laughs> this is depressing, and, and it makes me angry and sad both. Uh, just a funny thing, the little girl's name is Polly Trotsky. Trotsky. Now here we get connections to, Bra uh, to Animal Farm, because you'll see in the names of these characters that there are a lot of Marxist names, communist Marxist names. For example, Trotsky, he was a, right, he's a communist in, in the Soviet Union. You'll see later one of the characters' last names is Marx. You'll see Freud, another one. Freud was a sexual pervert, psycho. Um, so you, they, they people are being named after these communists. So you can see that this is just an, they're inspired by Marxism also. Brave New World is just a different kind of Marxism, right? In Animal Farm, we have the Marxism of fear and total power, right? Violence, like with Napoleon. But here we have the Marxism of using pleasure and mind control. But in both cases, what is the goal of Marxism? To make everybody a slave, except for the tiny few world controllers. The tiny few at the very top, everybody else a slave. Now that is what's the common thing between them. That's what's common between them. Okay, next, the next section from the rest of the um, chapter, it's actually a f somewhat confusing, um, it's written in a little bit confusing way because from, the, from here, from this point, the story jumps around constantly. Even I, you know, I'm the native speaker. I, it was a little confusing to me for, for the first couple pages. He jumps around between a few characters. And so like each, each paragraph, one paragraph, he talks about, you know, the director and the tour with the children. Then he talks about a new character, Le, Lenina, I think's her name. Then he talks about another character, Bernard. And then he goes back to... This uh, new character we're meeting in a minute. And he keeps jumping, 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 jumping around to all of these. And uh, you might be confused. You're like, what's happening? Well, it's kind of like in a movie where they cut. There's one scene and they cut to a different location. Then they cut to another one, cut back again. And that's what he's doing in writing. He's cutting around. He's, he's jumping around between these characters, between these um, situations. He's jumping very fast between them. So that's why if. If you tried to read it, it might seem a little um, confusing. So let's just say there are basically three main um, situations happening. We'll call them scenes, kind of like a movie. Three scenes now from for the rest of the book. For I'm not the book for the rest of the chapter. Three scenes. Number one is the tour, and at the tour, a new guy comes. He comes into the center. His name is Mustafa Mond. Mustafa Mond. He is one of the world controllers. This is an important character. He's one of the world controllers, Mustafa Mond. So he's, he's right at the top. He's, you know, there are only 10 people control the world. 10 people control this world, and he's one of them. He controls all of Europe, Western Europe. Mustafa Mond, he comes in to, and he comes in and he talks to the students a little bit. Then we have another, we jump to another scene, another group of characters. Okay, now this one, this is where we're going to meet kind of really our main character who will be coming. But um, there's a guy named Bernard and uh, someone, and then a guy named Henry, who's kind of like his co-worker. Henry and Bernard, they're co-workers, two men that work in the center. And uh, one of them, they're talking about going to movies. They call them feelies, going to the feelies this evening. And this is like kind of a virtual reality, virtual reality movies. He's predicting this. He wrote this, you know, a long time ago, but he's predicting. So it's like a movie, but it's more virtual reality. Like you can, you, they can see, they can hear, but they can also feel. They, get the, they can feel it with their body what's happening in the movie, like virtual reality. 
So they have these movies that are virtual reality. Okay, then we cut back again, back to the controller, Mustafa. And he's talking about, talking to the students about the past. He says, imagine in the past, children had mothers and fathers. Imagine in the past, there used to be families, but now there are no families. Now there are no mothers and no fathers. Right? So in Brave New World, the family is totally destroyed. This is what they're doing to us right now. Okay, finally, our third scene. We cut again to the next scene. Lenina Crown is our next main character. Our next, well, our next big character, Lenina. She also works in the center. It's a woman. And the, she's talking with a friend of hers named Fanny. And um, basically, they're having a conversation. Then it cuts back again to Mustafa saying how, how evil families are, how families are terrible and horrible, and it we're so much better now that families are destroyed, that there used to be love. People used to love each other and feel a strong, um, like a strong love, a strong connection to other people, but now nobody has a connection to anyone. Everyone belongs to everyone. This is one of their, uh, this is one of their kind of propaganda phrases. Remember an animal farm? It was everyone's equal. And uh, in this one, it's everyone belongs to everyone. It means no love. There's no love. And then they talk about Freud. Freud is their hero. They love Sigmund Freud, the mentally ill psychologist. And they say that, you know, Freud, Freud was a hero because he said that fathers and mothers are evil and bad and so they love Sigmund Freud. And, he, and then he says there used to be monogamy and romance. People used to just love one person and they would have a family and there would be romance. And all of this is terrible. Now everyone belongs to everyone. There's no love. There's no special connection. And then, this is important, then we cut again to Lenina having her conversation. And they're talking about Lenina. Lenina is kind of going on dates. And she's going on dates, but she's um, been going with this guy, Henry. And she's, she seems like maybe she likes him because she is going on dates, seeing Henry again and again, more than just a few times. So her friend says, that's not good. You know, you can't become attached to one person. You have to have sex with lots and lots of guys. You have to date and have sex with many, many, many guys. You can't have one special one. That's not good. Then we cut back again <laughs> to Mustafa talking about the world and how they use, this is important, this section, how do they use, how do they control people? They do it with pleasure, most of all. Of course, with mind control. We saw that already with the little children. But the next thing is pleasure they use. Desire. So they say that now in the world, everybody always gets what they want. They always get pleasure every time. Anytime they want something, they get it. And they train everyone to be promiscuous. Here's a vocabulary word, promiscuous, promiscuous. Promiscuous means having sex with many people, to have sex with many people. That's promiscuous. If you say a girl is promiscuous, she's having sex with lots of guys. And in this world, Brave New World, they want everyone to be promiscuous, men and women both. Then they will not fall in love. Then they will not have good families. This is already true, right? This is not science fiction. This is right now. The media constantly pushes this, promiscuous, right? That, that to be an independent, strong woman, a sexy woman, ah, sex in the city, have sex with lots and lots and lots of guys. Destroy, destroy your ability to love. Destroy your ability to have a good family. Become a slut, become a whore. This is what they want women to do. And they're doing a very good job of it. Because nowadays, that is what a lot of women are. 
and a lot of men too. And a lot of men too. So this, they already did this. This is already done. Then they talk about how feelings are bad, like especially positive feelings, uh, but any kind of feelings are bad. And uh, that the problem is if you have a desire, you want something. Before you get it, you feel some kind of emotion. You feel some kind of energy, right? So that's not good, they said. That's not good. So what they want is if you feel a desire for something, that immediately you get it. There's no hardship. There's no hard work. There's no discipline. No personal self-discipline. That you always consuming, consuming. That everybody in Brave New World just constantly pleasure, pleasure, desire, pleasure. Anything they want. Food, sex, pleasure. Constantly, all the time. Okay, next we meet, finally we meet our, uh, really our main character. He's the hero of the story. Bernard, and his last name is Marx. Karl Marx, right? Um, but Bernard's not, Bernard is starting to get red-pilled. And see what we'll see now, as we now that we know the world more. At, later in the book, we'll see this story is a lot of this story is about Bernard becoming red pilled, waking up, waking up to all of the evil of Brave New World, seeing it clearly, and everybody else thinking he's crazy. Everybody else will think Bernard's crazy because he's red pilled, but everybody else is still totally controlled and blue pilled. So they all think he's strange. Already in chapter three, uh, we hear a few people gossip about him that they think this guy is strange. He's 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 uh, spends too much time alone at home. Maybe he reads books sometimes. There's just something a little different about him. But he's he's not totally red pilled yet. But he's just beginning to wake up. And Bernard is an alpha plus, right? Remember the so he's at the very top of high. He's at the highest intelligence level of their society. So he's very smart, and he's starting to wake up. Next, we see uh, back to the world controller, Mustafa. He says, have any of you ever encountered an insurmountable obstacle? What does this mean? He's saying a, a problem you can't solve. Have any of you ever had a problem you could not solve? Have you ever wanted something, and then you could not get it? And like one guy gives a short example, like he wanted a girl and he had to wait four months until he had sex with her. And it was terrible, terrible. But in general, what we see is that in Brave New World, no, everybody gets what they want. Any desire they want for pleasure, they can get immediately, immediately. So they never have to struggle. Now, why is that? Imagine this. Why would they want this? Why would they want life to be so, so, so easy and physically pleasurable for everyone? What's the purpose of that? Well, because it makes people weak. Think about it. How do we get strong? We get strong through discipline, but we get strong through overcoming difficulty. Overcoming difficulty. That's how we get stronger. To make your muscles stronger, what do, must you do? You must lift heavy things, right? Difficult things. You must push and push and, it's, and struggle. Then you become stronger and stronger and stronger. What if, what, and the, on the other hand, what if uh, you just lay in bed all day and people bring you food and give you massages all day and you just have sex laying in the bed and everything's super easy. Anything you want, people bring it to you. You never use your muscles. What will happen? You'll get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. In fact, you'll probably eventually die. But you see, you become weak and therefore easy to control. So that's true for our body. We know this is true for bodies and muscles, right? If someone stays in bed too long, their muscles become super, super small. Eventually, they cannot walk. They're so weak. Well, this is also true for your mind. It's also true for your emotions, for your mind. So with your mind, if you always, everything's easy, 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 easy. You get everything you want, always, always, always. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasures. Just sex and food and pleasure and easy and easy. 
what happens? Your mind becomes weak. Mentally and emotionally, you become weak, 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 easy to control. A slave, a weak-minded slave. That's why they do it. That's what the evil geniuses of Brave New World have done. That's how they make everybody a slave. Because everybody is so, so weak. Because they're so focused on pleasure, distraction. They never have any challenge. They never think. They never grow stronger. They have no discipline. They're weak little slaves. Okay, next is an important part because it will show what's happening in the world right now. Right now, 2019. He talks about the past. Mustafa gives a history lesson next to the students. He says, there used to be something called Christianity. And he says, you know, he says it's bad. That Christianity was bad. They had to destroy. They destroyed Christianity. And of course, really, he's talking about all religion, God in general. He's talking about they had to destroy belief in God. They destroyed Christianity. And of course, uh, we can guess he also means they destroyed Islam. They destroyed um, Sanatana Dharma. They destroyed Buddhism. They destroyed all religion and faith in God. They had to destroy it to make everybody a good slave. They were, the Christians were too difficult to control. Okay, then he says there was a big war, big wars. Now, this is important too. He says there was a choice between world control and destruction. There was a choice between world control and destruction. This is very important. This is a very important technique used again and again and again. Uh, there's a great book about this called The Shock Doctrine. Shock Doctrine. Naomi Campbell wrote it, I believe. He's a little bit of a leftist, but it's still a good book. Um, the Shock Doctrine. This is what they do. The world controllers we have now. What do they do? First, they create a shock, some terrible situation, like an economic collapse. They did this in Argentina, for example. They collapse the money supply. They collapse the financial situation. They create the problem, a terrible problem. Then they give a choice to the people. You must choose our solution, which is always terrible, right? More control for them, or everything will be destroyed. So they make everybody afraid from the shock, from the disaster, financial disaster usually, or war. They do it with war too. So wars, killing, financial collapse. They create that first. Then they use that as an excuse to get control. They did it in America with 9-11, right? The, the attacks on 9-11. After 9-11, then they passed all these laws to take away freedoms from American citizens. And they created a police state. American democracy is dead. The American Republic is dead. The American Constitution is dead. It's fiction. It's no longer alive. Not since 9-11. Maybe even before that. But this is how they do it. So this is what they did in Brave New World. They created this huge, terrible war, and then they make everybody afraid and desperate, and then they created the Brave New World system. They force, in Brave New World, they force every man, woman, and child to consume. They have a, they have a uh, limit. You have to consume. You have to buy. You cannot live a simple life. If you live a simple life, they will punish you. You must buy, buy, buy. And they hate books. They said you can't consume much if you sit still and read books. They hate books because books cause people to think. And also books are cheap. So they don't want people to read. They want people to be out buying, buying, spending money, distracted all the time. Go to movies, play games, buy things, shopping, Music, all the time, don't read books. They talk about how in history, in Brave New World, the fake history here, there were 800 people who were, they called them simple lifers. They wanted to live simply. What did they do to them? They killed them with machine guns. They murdered all of them. They killed anyone who tried to live a simple life. They murdered them. That's what they want to do to us. They'll do it if they get enough power. 
Next, you'll this is happening in the United States right now. Every communist uh, uh, government does this, and all the leftist SJW governments are doing this now. They destroy history. They hate history. Again, if you know history, you can wake up. If you know history, you know there's another choice. You know that in the past there was a different world. You know in the past people fought differently, different beliefs. So they destroy and erase history. They destroy museums. They, go, they make the past. They, they tell lies about the past to say everybody in the past was evil and racist and terrible. They destroy statues and monuments for people in the past. They're doing this now in America where these assholes are destroying statues in the South for the, uh, from the Civil War. They did this in the Soviet Union, where they erase the past. They do this constantly. They lie about and erase the past. But it's not only communists. They do it all. This is a general thing. They do it in America, too. Finally, an important, another important part of our story. Soma. Drugs. And again, something we have now in our world. Lots of it. They created a drug, and it's called Soma. They call it the perfect drug, the perfect drug. So anytime anyone gets bored, anyone gets depressed, anyone starts to think too much, they take this drug. It's the perfect drug. It makes them feel wonderful. They also imagine, you know, wonderful things like a fantasy. They go into a fantasy world and feel fantastic. It's the, like the perfect pleasure, this drug, Soma. And they take holidays. They call it a Soma holiday. Anytime anything bad happens, they use Soma to feel great. And they say that Soma is what killed Christianity and religion. Soma destroyed religion. Soma killed Christianity and Islam and Sanatana Dharma and Buddhism. Soma destroyed it because... They, they taught everybody, you don't need God, just take this drug and you'll feel amazing. And again, we see this in our modern world where drugs are being pushed more and more and more, whether it's just marijuana or other things. And these drugs are being encouraged. Of course, the most common drug uh, is alcohol. And people use this to escape, right? They escape anytime people feel uncomfortable. Some people, then they, get, they just go drink, feel bored. They drink or smoke pot, smoke marijuana or whatever. They talk about old men in the past that they had to get rid of old age because old age also caused problems. Old people sometimes are difficult to control. Again, why? Because they become wiser, right? Old people in the past, he said, they become wiser. They think more. They live a more simple life. They become more religious. They have greater faith in God. These were bad things for Brave New World. So what they did is they make it so everyone stays young for their whole life. People still die, but they stay young. So even when they're older, even when they're 70, they're still doing the same things. They still act like children, like teenagers. They're still drinking and uh, going to movies and playing around and acting like kids. And again, we see this. We call this infantilization. It means uh, making people become like children like babies. And we see this now in America. There are whole groups of people who are 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, and they still act like little teenage kids. They're still, you know, focused on the media and things like that that are for kids. They act like children. I see this even in my parents' generation where they, they never grew up completely. They never fully became adults because, and they're less dangerous and more easy to control. And then finally, I told you this was a big chapter, <laughs> some big ideas. Finally, they use distraction. They says, we, we want not a moment to sit down and think. Thinking is the most dangerous thing in Brave New World. The world controllers do not want people to sit quietly and think. They want them to be distracted all the time, always watching movies or playing games or taking drugs but always, always, always distracted, doing something all the time, never sitting and thinking because that's dangerous to them. 
And of course, what, what can we say about that? Well, cell phones. Cell phones are probably our soma right now, right? The distraction. So then you look and you, you may know some people. I know a lot of people. They can never sit quietly. Never. I have a few people like this I've known. Like if you get in a car to drive with them, they must always turn on the radio. They can never have it be quiet because they can't just sit and think. They always need a distraction. So they must always play music or in their house. They turn on the music or they turn on a TV. They can never just be quiet, sit quietly. They need constant distraction. Or, of course, they're staring at their phones all the time, tapping away, playing on apps, playing games, watching videos. Never-ending distraction makes people weak and easy to control. Again, Brave New World predicted this almost 100 years ago. And now it's real. And that is the end of our very depressing chapter. So there we go. Woo! <laughs> so um, the big ideas. Uh, sex. Making children into sex objects. Sexualizing children. Which is pure evil. You know, really what we're seeing, this is, if, if, if you want to take a religious view, now Aldous Huxley did not when he wrote this. There's no mention of, you know, God and all that. But I would say Brave New World is, you know, the devil's plan. If you're a Christian, you could call it Satan's blueprint is Brave New World. Satan's blueprint. You could call it the Pharisee's blueprint. The Pharisees. This is the Pharisee world right here. If you're more of a Dharma person, you might say Maya. Maya's blueprint. But this is it. This is the world of Maya, the world of Satan. This is it. It's not flames and fire. It's this. Is this. God is destroyed. Faith in God is destroyed. God can never be destroyed, but all faith and belief in God is destroyed. All virtue is destroyed. All discipline is destroyed. All goodness is destroyed. Families destroyed. All gone. Replaced by sex and pleasure, drugs, and distraction. So this is the horrible world of Brave New World. We now have a pretty good picture. We now have a pretty good idea of what this world is. And it's it's horrible. It's mostly what makes it the most horrible is that we have it now. We're living in it. Not 100% yet, but we're probably in 80% of Brave New World already. So many of these things already are true. Not the details, you know. We don't have exactly Soma, but we have a whole lots of drugs and lots and lots and lots of drug addicts, heroin, marijuana, cocaine, etc., and huge numbers of drug addicts. And of course, the biggest one of all, alcohol, which many do with moderation, but many don't. Um, we have this massive distraction of movies and media full of lies, full of mind control, endlessly repeated. We have children becoming more sexualized. You know, we're abusing children sexually at younger and younger and younger and younger ages. It's pushed in the media constantly, constantly pushed in the media, younger and younger and younger. In general, all of us, all of us are, you know, encouraged to, you know, sex, 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 sex. Pornography. Pornography is another version. In Brave New World, I, I skip that section, but there's a little section. They talk about these movies they go to see. What are the movies about? They're about sex. These virtual reality movies, they're not about some heroic story. They're about sex. So it's basically pornography. They're going to see porno. They're going to see porn movies. That's, what, that's the entertainment in Brave New World. People go to see virtual reality pornography. So enslaved by pleasures and desires and sex. That's Brave New World. Um, what else? I think that's the main thing. And then finally, the other part, just connected to the book, the story, is now we have really the main characters. Mustafa Mond, the world controller. Bernard Marx, he's going to be our hero that's going to wake up. Lenina, this woman... We'll see later. I'll just give, tell you that Bernard, if I, I think I remember, Bernard likes Lena. Like he, he kind of falls in love with her, which in, in mem remember, love is bad in Brave New World. And she won't, she'll never quite wake up. Lenina is, is always going to be blue pilled. You'll see the contrast between them. And then, uh, what's his name? Is it uh, Harold? 
Henry, Henry, I believe his name was, um, is kind of Bernard's friend, who's also blue-pilled. Everybody is blue-pilled except for, you'll see later, I believe it's Bernard is red-pilled. And also what's interesting is I think we'll see that the world controller, Mustafa, he's red-pilled. He knows what's happening. He's not, con he's the controller. He's not controlled. So he knows what Brave New World really is. He's the one doing it, him and his uh, group. So he reads books. He knows all about everything. But that's not for the regular people. Not for the regular people. So there you go. Brave New World. Family destroyed. Religion destroyed. Virtue destroyed. Now, I want to say one last thing, since it's so depressing. Because <laughs> I was depressed reading this, too. And, the re and depressed because I realized they're doing it. They are doing it. It's everywhere now. We are in Brave New World now. But here's the good news. I'd say what we can use, what we can learn from this chapter. In, in a way, this chapter teaches us how to fight back. Right? Because it teaches us what they are afraid of. It teaches us... What can defeat them? What can beat them? I mean, what do they work very hard to destroy? What are they afraid of? God. Faith in God. Family. Strong, big families. Virtue. Discipline. Self-discipline. Right? These, the big three, I'd say. These big three, I would say. Faith, family, and virtue. That's how we beat them. So we do the opposite of all of this. You do the opposite of all this in your own life and with your own family. Develop your faith, faith in God, at least in a philosophy. If you're, if you're secular, you're not religious, then at least find some kind of deep traditional philosophy. Spend time. Don't just have some quick answer. You need to read the old, old books. So faith. Number two, family, right? They're working so hard to destroy marriage and family. So again, that tells us something. It tells us that families make us stronger. Families make us happier. Families make us not be slaves, harder to control. So support your families, not only your children and your husband or your wife, but your, you know, your grandparents, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your nephews, your nieces, uncles and aunts. Do everything you can to make those families stronger and bigger, stronger and bigger. This is one of our big weapons. This is one of our superpowers. Family is a superpower. Fight for your family. Make your family stronger. And then virtue. Virtue. This is something in, you know, our individual lives. Virtue means self-discipline, self-control. Make yourself a better person. More courageous, more brave, right? Uh, more wise. More generous, more kind, more loving. Remember love. They hate love in Brave New World. So it tells us that love is a big power for us too. Be more kind. Be more virtuous. Be more strong. Again, in Brave New World, we see that to control us, they want us to be weak. They want everything to be easy, easy, easy always in our lives. Easy and pleasurable. So what can you do to go against it? Do things that are difficult. Choose to do difficult things. Why? Just to do it. Just to feel yourself growing stronger. There, in fact, is a kind of pleasure in doing this. It's a different kind of pleasure. It's a deeper kind of pleasure and happiness that comes when you overcome something difficult. So in the short term, it maybe feels painful. It's uncomfortable, certainly. Maybe that feels negative. But the thing is, after you do it, you feel this amazing feeling that I'm now stronger. I'm now better. I'm a more disciplined person. I overcame this problem. It makes you better and stronger, and it makes you much happier at a deeper level. Just like with your body, right? Like if you try to lift weights, let's say you try to lift, I don't know, uh, you know, 30 kilograms over your head with one arm. You can't do it. Ah, and every day you're working out, and it's painful and difficult. But then one day you finally... Ah, you do it. You feel amazing. You did it. You, you overcame this terrible problem. This hard struggle with your muscles, your strength. And of course, what happens at the same time? Your muscles are growing. Your body's getting stronger. 
Everything's getting better. And in the end, you are much happier because you did the difficult things, because you did the uncomfortable things. Your deep, we could say, spiritual happiness is much stronger. So do that. Do that. It tells you don't be lazy, right? Brave New World wants you to be lazy. Brave New World wants you to just sit around and eat crappy food and watch pornography and sit on your butt and watch TV all day and don't do anything difficult. So do the opposite. Do hard things just because they're difficult. Challenge yourself mentally. Challenge yourself physically. Challenge yourself emotionally. Challenge yourself spiritually. This is one reason I'm fasting. This is one reason I'm fasting. One, one of many. So they're giving us, in this chapter, we're actually giving, we're shown the weapons. We're shown what we can do to solve the problem. They're, if we just do the opposite of everything they're doing, we are now fighting against them. We can now destroy them. That's, it's perfect. It's very clear. So that's the good news of this chapter. This is what we can learn to be more powerful and more strong. Faith, family, virtue, love, self-discipline. That's how you beat them. That's how you have a true happiness. That's how you become red-pilled. That's how you become no longer a slave, free free mentally all right let's go to comments um i'm sure we have some big discussion today because this is a heavy topic one second let me drink water hasina khalid says this is a sad truth but if people just stop and observe their life and try to answer the big questions, it will get easier to accept the truth. But I also believe there's more good than evil. Well, right. It's because this is evil controlling good. This is how the good people become slaves, right? Because there are a lot of nice blue-pilled people, but they're still slaves. Because what you just said, Hasina's is right. Right in Brave New World, they don't want them to think. Thinking is really bad, so they want to distract, distract. So you do the opposite. You really, you, you read philosophical books. I'm just going to say philosophical. That includes religious and philosophy. It means books about, old books about the meaning of life, how to live a good life, what is a good life, what's important in life and what's not, the purpose of life. Okay, there, there are many, 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 many books from many, many cultures about these topics, especially the old books. Read and read and read those old books and think about the questions. I'm not going to give you the answers, but think, 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 and you will find your way out. That's right. You will become more red-pilled. Right, Slavika says, we must have faith against everything in Brave New World. We'll have faith with ethics, philosophy, and truth. Yes, indeed. Truth is a big one. Speak the truth. This is another way we fight Brave New World. Always speak the truth, even when it's unpopular and uncommon. If you see something, that you know, like with Brave New World, don't just agree with it. Say something. This is my own little way of doing it right now through my show. Yeah, Long Huang says, children admire singers as a model for their life, even though they are drug addicts or sexual criminals. Take K-pop with big band music van as an example. Eh, eh, all popular music, all of it. It's garbage. That's my conclusion now. I don't listen to any of that shit anymore. I just don't because it is exactly this. It's all some kind of programming and especially bad for children. That's right. They... Uh, you know, sometimes the music is skillful. Sometimes it is. You know, their singing is skillful. The songwriters are skillful. The people playing the instruments are skillful. But they package it in this whole thing. Like you said, you know, they put the girls in sexy little outfits. And it's sex, 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 sex. Nonstop with the women and with the guys too sometimes. And then another thing you see with the men is crime. You know, all of the hip hop and rap music, all of that stuff. It's just drugs and crime and crap. It's garbage. Look at the lyrics. Garbage, most of it. 
and more than the lyrics, look at the videos and what the images they're showing you in those videos. And they are aiming it at children, you know, teens, young teens. And again, yeah, they're pushing, be promiscuous, have sex, 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 sex with lots and lots and lots of guys. Take drugs, party, drink, pleasure, distraction, pleasure, distraction. It's garbage. It's garbage. Ah, okay, so here's an important question. I like these kind of questions because they're looking for solutions, and I kind of think that same way. So, you know, I'm reading the chapter, and I'm kind of thinking, well, this is depressing. And I think about the world, I think this is really depressing. <laughs> but then I was to ask the next question, exactly what Anshaman is saying. How to break this habit of desiring easy things? Excellent question. How do we do it in our own lives? Well, I'll tell you one, the thing I'm doing right now I think fasting is the number one thing. Fasting, 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 fasting. Fasting is a superpower that gives you control over all of your life that breaks all addictions. Now, I'm speaking from experience now, okay? Before, right, last month, this would not be my answer. But after fasting almost a whole month now, it is freaking super powerful. Super powerful. You just gain it. You regain control. And fasting means don't eat. It means you go some time period without eating. If you really want to be disciplined, you don't drink also. That's called a dry fast. I've done both. I've been doing a wet, I'll call it a wet fast, where I just drink water, salt water. That's most of my fasting this month. But I have done a few dry fasts where even no water for like two days. And um, is it difficult? Yeah, the dry fasting especially is difficult, especially after 24 hours, you know, more than 24 hours. It can be quite difficult sometimes. But, it, but when you do it, it, like it, it increases your mental discipline. And then it breaks a lot of your addictions. Your food addictions will be broken. My sugar addiction is gone now. I don't, I don't desire sugar at all. When I do eat, I don't eat anything with sugar. No sugar at all. Zero. I've doing, been doing zero carb, in fact emotionally, again, great, great, great control. So fasting is one of the great ways. That's would be number one, how to break this desire for easy things. Number two, um, uh, physical exercise, but especially physical challenges. Okay. Physical challenges. So, um, become a runner and decide, you know, register for a marathon. Well, then you got to, that's not easy. Especially if you're a new runner, a marathon's not easy. You have to train, you got to work, you have to have discipline. Um, maybe, maybe you don't like running. You want to do something with strength. Fine. You know, do like some power lifting or set a goal for your weightlifting. I will bench press, you know, choose a number. And then you got to work hard to get that number or join CrossFit or, you know, anything. There's so many things you can do. Physical challenges that are difficult. That you have to train for this also will help break this desire for easy things. This will help increase your self-discipline and control, your power, your strength. Meditation is one. We're going to talk to Acharya Ji soon, next month, about meditation. And he'll teach us about different ways to meditate. It also helps to break desires in a different kind of way. Meditation helps you just to see the desire, understand it, and let it go. You don't react to it. You might still feel the desire, but you don't do anything. You take no action. You just let it come and you let it go. Meditation also very powerful. Meditation and prayer, I would say both. So there's a few ex few answers for like in your personal life. What can you do to break those desires? Ah, yeah, right. Okay, so Iba, I think you're talking about teaching in a school. I tried teaching children about the Gita. I never yelled at them. I tried to make children uh, uh, learn with how to win friends and influence people, so teaching them social skills. I fasted one day a week, and they kicked me out of the school. Of course they did. Of course they did. Imagine Brave New World. We'll see this with Bernard. As he becomes red-pilled, they're not going to like him either. All right? So you can't do this inside the system. You're not going to do it inside. You can try it a little bit, but eventually you've got to become independent. That's why I started my own company, Effortless English. I couldn't do what I do in schools. They wouldn't let me talk about this stuff in a school. No way. No way. 
They wouldn't even let me do just basic, uh, you know, interesting teaching methods like using the stories. So no way. You, you're going to have to, we have to become independent. Ibrahim Ali, again, with the children, and he's exactly right. Most children today want to be an actor or a singer, which are shitty jobs, okay? Historically, these are like prostitutes, okay? They're not, they're low status. I'm not saying every singer's bad, every actor's bad. Of course not, but they're, they're, they're not heroes, okay? In no way are they heroes. What do they do that we should admire? Nothing. They pretend to be someone else, that's an actor, and a singer. They sing, and they maybe a little nice music. Okay, that's nice. It's okay, but it's it's they're not heroes. They're not facing any terrible dangerous things really in real real in the real world. The average, you know, fireman is much more of a hero than an actor or a singer. Right? You probably know a lot of people in your regular life who are much more heroic than these people. Yet our children, what do they want to do? They want to become actors and singers. They consider them as role models, and they are not role models. They live, most of them live, uh, sometimes openly, sometimes secretly, they live brave new world lives. It's all sex, sex, sex with tons of people, drugs, alcohol, parties. That's, that's the celebrity world. How can we protect our children from this horrible thinking and change their mindset? And again, a nice solution question. I'll say it again. No screens, no screens, no screens for children. Your child does not need a cell phone. They don't even need a computer. They don't need it. Read books. Get them to read books. Read the old stories, the traditional stories. Read the traditional, very old. Get the old, old. Get the oldest versions you can of children's stories. Read those to them. When they can read by themselves, again, find those old versions of the books, the old traditional books. Get them when they're old, even older and they're getting smarter. Get them to read the classics, real literature, real books. And teach them about Brave New World. Okay, you have to teach this directly to them. Don't just say no. Don't just say no, you can't watch TV. No, you can't do this. If you don't explain, of course, they'll, they'll rebel against you. They won't like it. You have to explain it and not just explain it. You have to teach it to them and show it to them. You could, you know, discuss. You could do what I'm doing. You could read Brave New World together and with the older children and discuss it and then show them, show them, get little video clips, get little, you know, pieces from TV shows and movies and other things and show them and together you learn about it and you examine it and you see, see what they're doing. You see the message they're sending. Then your child becomes red-pilled. You have to red-pill your child too. You can't just say no. If you just say no, especially with the older ones, then they're, they're just going to go against you. So that's not enough. You have to red pill them. You have to wake them up. Wake them up. When they're young, you just keep them away from it. That's why you should homeschool. If you homeschool, it's quite easy to keep them away from all this garbage when they're young. As they get older then, then you start to red pill them. Little by little, you red pill them. When they're a teenager, they're super red pilled. You have a super red-pilled teenager. So they're not fighting against you. They're seeing it. They see it. It's, they're red-pilled. It's like in the movie They Live. They've got the glasses. They can see it. Uh, Christy with a good question. It's so depressing. I'm glad we're doing this book club. Otherwise, I don't, wouldn't understand it. How come the writer could predict all of these things? Because he was friends with the, um, his family was like a part of the upper class in Britain, in England, right? And this is back when England was quite powerful, right? This is back before America was the, the, the main superpower, when England still had big influence. And they still do in some ways, England does, in banking and things. So um, Aldous Huxley's, I believe his grandfather, was in the ruling elite. He was part of that world. So Aldous learned about it. He learned about their plans. Why could he write this so carefully? Because he knew. He learned about it. He was in that society. He was around those people. He knew this is what they wanted to do. So he had connections to world controllers. That's why it's so accurate. That's why he predicted this so well. Because he, he, th these were their plans, you know, over, you know, almost 100 years ago, they were, they planned this and now it's real and they will continue to try to make it completely real.
They're still trying. Namaz with a battle cry. Let's stand up. Don't allow them to destroy our world. Forward with Mr. AJ. Thank you for the amazing mindset. Thank you, Namaz. That's the spirit. We have to have a fighting mindset. Can't become depressed. Keep your morale up. The fight never ends, remember. The fight never ends. We just fight and fight and fight. Faith, family, virtue, love, discipline. These are the weapons we have to fight them. And our weapons are better. Okay? They win when we give up. They win when we become depressed and we let them do these things. But when we fight and we fight, we're stronger than them. Faith is stronger. Family is stronger. Virtue is stronger. They're weak, right? So many of we call them SJWs in America sometimes, social justice warriors. Um, they're crazy and they're doing all this crazy stuff and all this evil stuff. But when you actually fight them face to face directly, when you really stand up to them, they, they, they're mentally ill. They're not emotionally strong. They're not mentally strong, even physically. We call them soy boys. They're weak. Okay? So that's our power. They win because we get depressed, because they do have great financial power and huge control. But individually, they're weak. So have faith. Keep the faith and keep fighting. Don't become depressed. Like Slavika said, this is the right attitude. I take prayer and meditation, and I don't care. So she's not afraid. God controls the evil. Exactly. God wins in the end, guys. And Lisa, with another important point, this chapter draws attention to the importance of family and friends in our lives today. Let us be grateful for these relationships based on strong emotions. Yes, yes, yes. Family is so important and friends, the close friends. I often, when I say family, I'm, I include my closest friends because I think of them as part of my extended family. But, you know, this this thing where the families have been destroyed, you know, and three generations ago, my grandmother's generation. You had three generations or four generations living together, sometimes in the same house, right? You have great-grandparents, grandparents, parents, and children, all in the same house or the same neighborhood, right, near each other. Big, strong family, right? Then they started destroying that, and they destroyed it, especially with jobs, so everybody has to move around all the time to make money to get a better job. So then it became what we call the nuclear family, this is my parents' generation. My parents' generation is just really parents and children only. Parents and children only. But then with my parents' generation, they started the divorce thing. And so then even that, that nuclear family now breaking up. So there's so many divorces and things. So they're like little by little trying to make the families smaller and weaker until totally destroyed. They want the schools and the government to raise the children. Then they have total control. This is why homeschooling is so important, but it's also why family, 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 family is so important. Your wife and your children, your husband and your children, super important. But also, don't forget your parents. Don't forget your brother and sister. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes the relationship's not good right now. But keep working to keep it as good as you can. And also your uncles and your aunts and your cousins and your nephews and your nieces. And see if you can try to live near each other. It's not always possible. I live far from my family, but do your best. Elena, good point. To make children read, we need to read all the time because children copy us. That's right. Why not have a family reading time? You could have one hour a night instead of watching some stupid TV. Turn that off and we ha you have a family reading time. Everybody chooses any book they want. Stephen Krashen calls this free voluntary reading. It's an excellent way to improve reading and vocab and everything. Um, your children's um, learning will go be so great but just let them choose any book they want of course you make sure it's not a bad book but but otherwise you know at reading time then dad reads mom reads and the kids read if it's young children you read to them out loud but if they're older everybody can just sit together in the same room and you all read for a while that's a great way to do it that's really nice You're right you show the example you don't just tell them Faik says, a problem, a lot of parents get involved with the idea that if you don't go to school, you won't be a brilliant and bright future. You won't have one. Yeah, well, they're brainwashed, of course, right? We see it in Brave New World. Everybody's brainwashed. Everybody's controlled from a very young age. 
So we'll see this later in the story. Bernard's very frustrated. As he becomes red-pilled, it's very hard for him because no one else is. No one else can see what he sees. They're all mind-controlled. Humble Boy says, They also want to kill us off. That's why they put chemicals in our food and water. That's why they made abortion normal. Murdering a child is a heroic thing in this society. You're right. It's 100%. Abortion's another one. They do. They're trying to kill us off and reduce the population. Especially they want to reduce the population of intelligent thinking people. That's why they want you to like abortion. That's why they put all this crap in our foods. This is, you're right. Yeah, Vladislav, thank you for the update. Brave New World was written in 1931, published in 32. So not quite 100 years, but, you know, 80 plus years. 90, almost 90 years. Nama says, sometimes children don't listen to parents. They're so programmed. They leave homes. What to do in the situation? Well, you have to start young. You know, you can't. Yeah, if you wait till they're 16 and then you try to start telling them all this stuff uh, and just giving them, bossing them and ordering them there. Yeah, they'll go against you probably. You know, this is why you homeschool. If you homeschool, they don't get the same programming. So they're going to be much better. Homeschooled families are much closer, much better. The children and the parents have a much stronger relationship for their whole life for homeschooling families in general. In general. And the other thing is you have, to, like I said, you have to red pill them. You teach them why. You show them the details. You train them. It's not just telling them no. You can do that with young kids. But as they get older, you're not just saying no. You're training them. You're training them in all of this so they see it all. Then they're not going to go against you so much. I mean, in the end, they have free will. When they become adults, they will do what they want. But you have to do your best. Okay? You have to do your best. If you don't try, they definitely are going to be programmed little robots. I have no idea. I don't understand this question. On one side, you're telling us schools aren't good. They're focusing on old methods and stories. I did not say they're focusing on stories. Schools don't focus on stories. Other side shouldn't give children any screens, give them books and stories. Is it a paradox? It's not a paradox. Schools use textbooks. I'm not saying you don't give your school to your children textbooks. When you homeschool, don't use textbooks. Books, real books, real stories, the old books, the old fairy tales, the, the old classics, all of these things. Read the Odyssey, read the Iliad, read the Aeneid, for example. Not, not the garbage crap they teach in school. There's no paradox at all. They don't teach those kind of stories in school. They teach a bunch of crappy textbook garbage that's full of propaganda. Yeah, Humble Boy is exactly right. If you want, the, if you want an example of this, Desmond is amazing. Do a search on Desmond is amazing. This is a poor little boy who's being abused, sexually abused by probably his father and his mother too. And, uh, and now the media is pushing him. It's this little boy, and they're saying he wants to be a girl, and they're dressing him up. Soon they're going to give him hormone injections. And the media, the American media, is promoting this poor little boy. They have this boy dancing for money in front of gay men at a gay club. It's sick. It's evil. They should all be killed, in my opinion, <laughs> except the boy. The boy's not evil. He's just being abused. It's disgusting, but this is Brave New World. Exactly. They're sexualizing this poor little boy. Sad. It's tragic, and they, the media is pushing it. Vanda, I want to tell you I really admire your work. I watched you for a long time. Bless you and your family. Thank you, Vanda. That's very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, and Cleefy again, with it exactly like Elena. It's too difficult to prevent our kids to be far from screens if we don't give them an example. That's right. 
we must be red pilled first, then our kids follow us. That is exactly right. Yeah, if you're on your phone all the time, you're carrying your phone around, uh, and then you tell your child, no screens for you. Yeah, you think that's going to work? Of course it won't work. You have to do it yourself first. You have to show the example. They learn mostly by watching you more than more than by what you tell them directly. Khalif is exactly right. We've got to set the example for ourselves. Yeah, Mark Wallace. At war, they always try to eliminate the wisest people. They know that without them, it's easier to, ve to defeat the opponent. We have a war all the time. Instead of rifles, now we have TV and the internet. Yeah, it's a culture war. You'll, you know, you'll see people call this the culture war. We are in a war right now. It's a mine. It's an info war. It's a culture war. You're right. Like think of Cambodia. What did they do when the Khmer Rouge, the communist, took control of Cambodia? They killed all the smart people. They even killed people who wore glasses because they thought that meant they were smart, like they were intellectuals. They tried to kill them first. They kill all the red pill people. Okay, I'm going to jump down to the bottom. You guys are typing quickly. Yeah, well, this is a hard question in. Hey, Jay, sometimes I see children who are the victims of Brave New World, but I don't want to look nosy in a meddler. How can I um, like wake up their parents that are friends and relatives? That's a hard question. I understand that, especially when you're talking about other people's children. I mean, in the end, it's not our responsibility. They have to do it. So I'd say the way to do it is to try to red pill the parents, but not, not talk just red pill the parents directly, not talking about the children. Like, I would avoid the topic of the children because people get very defensive and, uh, you know, if you try to interfere with their children. And they probably should. It's That's natural. Um, so you just try to wake them up in other ways about, in general, about Brave New World and other things. And uh, eventually, if you can red pill them enough, then maybe they'll wake up about their own kids too. The other way is you show it by example. This is probably the best way. By example. So, for example, if what if you say um, you want to, you have a bunch of your family is they're off, they're fat and unhealthy. A bunch of people, a lot of people, you love them, you care about them, but they're fat and unhealthy and sick. You can talk to them about it. They probably won't listen. So, what can you do? You become super healthy. You become an example of super health, amazing health. You fast. You eat great foods. You exercise. You become just like a super healthy person and they see that example then when you talk to them about health they can't argue with you they can't argue with you because it's obvious the results you're getting well you can kind of do this in other areas of your life like if you homeschool your children and then at first people will, oh my god oh, what are you doing and they have all these worries about it oh, how will they meet friends but then later after a few years when your kids are 10 times smarter than their kids and uh, much, much, much better academically, better writers, better speakers, better readers, everything better and smarter. And they're, they're so much more confident and your family has, is so much stronger. Uh, then maybe they listen a little more. Maybe, maybe not. In the end, like Morpheus says in the, the Matrix, in the end, you know, we cannot wake up everybody. Luckily, we don't have to. Yeah, like Namaz says, my cousin's only three years old, already has a phone. When you take the phone from him, he begins crying. He says, I love phone more than my mom, right? Those are bad parents. I'm sorry, but your cousin has bad parents. They should wake up. They should wake up and take that evil thing from him. Yeah, Faik says, they make us believe our ancestors had a terrible life without technology. This is that part of erasing history. They try to make it, right? This is the idea that the, the present moment, that right now we live in the best time ever in history, which is nonsense, which is stupid, and that everybody in the past was just suffering all the time, Oh, which is also nonsense. We know it's nonsense. Read old books. You know they weren't that way. In fact, I'd say in many ways they were better than us. 
they were more intelligent than us. The average, you know, kind of uh, in educated person in the past was far more intelligent, even 100 years ago. We can just read their writing. You can tell the writing, the quality, the level of the writers, the in intellectual level, the vocabulary level is so much higher. The, the, the way of thinking, you can go back to ancient Greece, same idea. Um, they were much more brave than us. They were much stronger than us. We are weaklings. We are so weak now. They were strong. They were So many, many, many things about our ancestors were far better than us. All we have is technology. And what is the technology doing? Is it making us better and stronger and more you know, virtuous? It's not. In general, it's not. It has, there's some useful things, but overall, we're not better people. We're not better people than our ancestors. I'd say we're worse. Mostly we're worse. Yeah, like Slavika says, always be in touch with your ancestors. It's so powerful. Yes, respect your ancestors. Respect them. Respect them. You are here because of them. Many of them faced terrible difficulties that you can never imagine that you probably could not survive because we're so weak now. You and me both. So we should respect our ancestors. Yeah, like Christy says, we don't have TV in the house for a long time. It's given us lots of great benefits, such as more time to read. Yeah, you don't need a TV. I don't have a TV. How can you get better friends? So Siraj asks, um, one of the big problems is uh, it's about friends, right? Yeah, if you have a bunch of blue-pilled friends and they're all doing this, they just want to drink and do all this stuff and they're they're not very, you know, they don't really improve your life much. Maybe you need better friends. How to get them? I don't know. My answer is just go live a better life and eventually the better people find you. Eventually you'll meet them. So don't worry about, oh, I got to just start living a virtuous life focused on those things, you know, faith, family, virtue, uh, doing difficult things. Just start doing all that stuff and you'll meet better people when you do it. Yeah, like Ozma says, in Animal Farm, it was easier for the animals to wake up because they were free before. They were free before the revolution. But here in Brave New World, they're programmed before birth. Yes. Yes, that's why the Brave New World uh, plan is more dangerous and more powerful because the mind control starts at birth. There are no families, so there's no way for mom or dad to prevent it. This is what they want. Oh, Humble Boys in Georgia. That's my home state. I'm a Georgia boy. I grew up in Georgia. They wanted to pass an anti-abortion law. I thought they did pass it. And all of Hollywood started to go against it. Hollywood wants the blood of our children. Yes, they do. Hollywood is evil, 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 pure evil. Yes, that's right. They're disgusting. Don't ever have Hollywood people, these actors and these others. They're not heroes. Don't make them your heroes. Don't make them your role models. Ugh. They're disgusting. The more we find out about their real lives, they're disgusting people. Just because they look pretty. Okay, that's a lot of makeup. It's a lot of lighting tricks. It's a lot of camera tricks. Okay, millions and millions of dollars to make them look like that. It's perfect clothing, all of this stuff. They're not good people. Yeah, our, our ancestors, Huang says, our ancestors had a better understanding about God, Buddha, astrology, astronomy. Take the pyramids for an example. Yeah, the great pyramids of uh, Egypt. Yes, they did. They had a much, much greater understanding of these things. Right. Now, see, Anand, see, you're, you're, you're exactly right about this. This is connected to our chapter again. Anand says, in this era, children become so entitled they can't accept no from anyone. They want everything they desire. That's just what this chapter was saying, right? Every desire, you get it instantly. No waiting. 
You know, you want it and you get it. You want it and you get it. You want it and you get it. No waiting, no patience, no being uncomfortable, no being denied anything, never hearing no. That's right. If they don't get what they want, they'll kill themselves. What a tragedy. Yes. Right? Brave New World. That's Brave New World, right? All these little spoiled kids and um, each generation's worse. Where they, If they don't get something, I want uh, a car, a new car, a teenager maybe. And then they don't get it and they, oh, I got it. And they go crazy. They think that just because they want it, they should get it. They have no idea of working hard. They have no idea of discomfort. They have no idea of reality. They think that any desire, they should always have it. And this makes them weak, right? Are these children weak or strong? It's obvious. You can look at them. They're weak. They're weak. They're weak. They're emotionally weak. They can't handle any difficulty at all. Any little difficulty, any no, any problem. And they, ah, and they go crazy. They're weak. Therefore, easily controlled. All right, I'm going to do a couple more, and then I got to go, guys. Got to go soon. All right. MS Option says, I still remember when you recommended for us to watch the Active Self-Protection YouTube channel. ASP, Active Self-Protection. It's a great YouTube channel. It was shocking to me. I had to wake up to reality. Yeah, that'll show you some reality right there, that the world is not such a soft place, that there's danger out there still. This is right. Elena says, I don't have a TV in my home. My friends consider me strange or crazy, but I don't care. I have a lot of free time and activities in my family. Yes, that's right. The blue pill people always think the red pill people are crazy. They'll say you're crazy, you're strange. Uh, they just think they, they, you make them uncomfortable, you see, because I think somewhere in their brain, somewhere in their brain, they have a little bit of the truth and, uh, it's really uncomfortable when they meet a red-pilled person, when they see red-pilled people, because it kind of, it kind of makes them question their own choices. They have, it makes them, uh, if everybody's doing it, then, then they don't think. But if they meet someone who's not doing it, like someone doesn't have a TV, then they're, uh, then, then it, it kind of makes them uncomfortable. Someone else is doing something different. They can't imagine it. Interesting. And Namaz also saying, nowadays children watch many cartoons. It damages their eyes too. Causes many health problems. Yeah, don't watch, don't show your kids those cartoons. They're garbage. I think we're almost done. The questions are getting a little less now. Ah, Londa says, I share all of your videos with my friends, my family members. I have some nieces and nephews totally brainwashed. Well, we all do. You know, most people are brainwashed. Because it starts so young, most people are red, uh, blue-pilled. Most people are brainwashed. So we're trying, you know, person by person, we're trying to wake more and more people up. It's a fight. It's a fight. And we'll keep fighting. Mohammed asked about certification. Uh, it's too difficult to get a job without certification. I believe your advice about homeschool, but where can I get a certificate? Well, I don't know what certificate you're talking about. Um, depends on the job. Most of them you can just, uh, you could do like a short course. You could take a test for some of them. Um, I, I'm not sure. It really depends on each individual job. It's no problem though. It's, it's easy. Easy to do. I think that's it. Ah, MS option with a good final question here. Is there a good sustained alternative to the evil companies, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook? There's not one, but more and more are coming. Okay, this is the good news. Because they're so bad, because they are attacking so many of their own customers, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, they're creating their competition, which is great. 
Uh, Gab, I'd say, is the best one. I really like Gab now. G-A-B. I'm on Gab. In fact, Twitter, I think, is even shadow banning me now. Some people not getting my tweets, not seeing them. So you really should follow me on Gab. Uh, I hope, you know, I plan to be more and more and more active on Gab and less and less active on Twitter. Right now I do both. But Gab, G-A-B dot com. Follow me at A-J Hogue, A-J-H-O-G-E, at A-J Hogue on Gab. So Gab is probably the best right now. For video, there's BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E, BitChute. I'm on BitChute also. A-J Hogue also on BitChute. So that's a nice video one. They don't have live video yet. If they had live video, I'd be doing my live videos there. But they don't. But I have the recordings, all my videos Recordings are on BitChute also. Uh, there's one coming called Social Galactic. That's coming soon. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be probably like a Twitter alternative. But there's not one big one. Okay, those three have massive amounts of money behind them. Um, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. But... Um, the good news is more and more alternatives are coming. There probably there probably will not just be one alternative to each one. There's probably going to be lots of them, and we, then we just choose a few that we like. So I like Gab. I'll continue to do Gab. Bitshoot's okay. If they did live video, I would do Bitshoot, but I'm waiting. I'm hoping they'll do live videos. If not, something else will come. Something else will come. So yeah, we've got alternative guys. Don't worry. You, that's why, by the way, you should follow me though on those channels. You should definitely subscribe to my BitChute channel because I don't know, YouTube might block me. So you might, you should follow me on BitChute, AJ Hogue. You should follow me on Gab. All right, guys, I think that's all. Time for me to go. Brave new world. Brave new world. Woo! Okay, so I think the good news is with Brave New World, we can finally start getting into the story now. The first three chapters were really to introduce us to the world, which is a very, very evil world. And so it's a little depressing, these first three chapters. The next, uh, you know, as we go now, we'll start to see Bernard as he tries to wake up, as he slowly starts to wake up. Um, so we'll see. Next week, we'll do chapter four thank you for joining us this is a heavy chapter guys this is a complicated book this is not an easy book the writing style especially chapter three was not easy not easy at all very difficult and the ideas of the book are very deep and powerful and again not easy so you're doing great understanding this so fantastic to you thank you for the great comments and questions very good very thoughtful as usual and um have a great day. I'll be back. I'll be doing more interviews um, coming too. I've got a Chayerji's scheduled soon. I'll schedule him for probably July to talk about meditation. So I'll get some positive interviews. I'm definitely going to invite Cole Robinson to talk about fasting. Hope he will accept. Love to talk to him. And uh, I'll be bringing in other people also. So lots of good stuff coming. And finally, my business English conversations course is coming very soon. If you're interested in anything about business, business English, your career, your job, making money, that's a great course for you. As always, join my VIP program. Commit, don't quit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com.